This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Mino Studio is a pre- and post-production facility for all of your audio needs. Mino Studio's founder is an accredited audio engineer with top 40 and in indie album credits. With over 30 years of music industry experience, Mino Studio can take your podcast from idea to reality. Contact Mino Studio at Mino Studio 777 at gmail.com for more information. That's Mino Studio spelled M E N O, Mino Studio 777 at gmail.com. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs. And welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes, not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. So today's topic is Stealth Tenant Marketing Update, back in California. That's right. I am back in Southern California, and it's great to be back with my beautiful wife and precious family. I miss them a lot, and I hope I don't have to do that again, but boy, oh boy, did I learn a lot. Well, before I start, I just want to say I just hope that by sharing these real-life experiences with you, that you are learning new, valuable, first-hand information that you can use and that will help your efforts to be successful in your real estate investing endeavors. I don't always particularly enjoy sharing my personal life with everybody, especially my failures, but keep in mind, that's one of the reasons I started this show, and that is not only to feature guest speakers who are successful and have done well, but also to share my true life experiences of how I'm trying to make it, and this is without filters, I'm sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly, so that you can benefit from the things that I do that work and hopefully avoid um, and save you from repeating the mistakes that uh, I also do that don't work so well. So here it is, the real stuff. I'm going to give you just a brief little update of, of uh, my trip and uh, everything that happened. Well, at least a summary of things that happened. But, you know, I, each time I do these, I, I try to put in like a little background and, and what happened and so forth. Well, I'm going to do it a little bit different today. That's right. Um, give you a little wrap up as to why I went to Indy in the first place. But this time... I've got a little song for my <laughs> for my old dog friends here. You're going to think I'm totally, totally messed up. But anyway, you know, maybe being away from home made me a little bit crazy, but that's all right. I'm ready here. And so I just got a, a quick little recap in song of what, why I went to Indianapolis. <laughs> Listen to my story about a man named Bill Bought an empty apartment but he couldn't keep it filled Then one day he knew what he didn't need He loaded up his bags and he went to Indy Annapolis that is Cornfields Hoosiers Well next thing you know Bill's living in the hood Doing all the things that a good landlord should Said California is the place I'd rather be But he couldn't leave that place until he reached 90 Percent that is Occupancy Cash flowing all the way Okay, boy, you got a special treat. 
I know a bunch of you guys are listening going, man, oh man, I bet you his wife just really wished that trip took a little bit longer than it did. No, okay, no, you're not thinking that. And she didn't think that either, so stop it. Anyway, it was an incredible experience. And as difficult as it was being away from my wife and kids for a month, I learned a lot from the things, I mean, these are things that I, I could not have learned in a seminar, in a boot camp, a book. I mean, this is something that only experience would have taught me. And, uh, you know, I just uh, thought I would just kind of give you just a a quick little uh, get away from the silliness of that song here. Um, just a quick little summary here. I bought a 22 unit apartment. I have an aggressive value add repositioning plan that wasn't being met. So I decided to go to Indianapolis, move into one of my empty apartments, and was committed to both speed up the rehab process and rent it before I could go back home. So here I am. I'm back in Southern California. So that must be good news, right? Yep, that's good news. And here's a quick summary of all that happened. We were able to boost occupancy from 68%, which is what it was before I left, to 95%, 5% higher than my goal. I had seven vacant units, six of which are now rented or in the process of being rented. Um, we were also able to create a solid foundation, a pipeline of sorts, comprised of businesses, organizations, and a network of good tenant referral sources in the area that was specifically designed to be sort of a, a funnel or steady stream of new potential high-quality tenants for future turnovers. I've rehabbed and uh, helped improve the, the beautiful historical look of this property, which is something we we're trying to bring back. It was built in 1925, and we we're really trying to make it look nice, like almost like it was when it first was built. We've connected with a lot of our neighbors, other apartment owners, and residents of the community, others in the area, to build an alliance, to stay connected and committed to bringing in good tenants to the area and upgrading the neighborhood to a safer, more desirable area for Indianapolis. And we didn't just fill the units with bodies. That would have been easy. But we found strong, solid tenants who are working people with good jobs and a commitment to live in an commu apartment community that feels like home, a nice, welcoming, safe, and well-maintained place that they look forward to coming back to each evening after work. And something of a personal note, too, we even started a little Bible study uh, in, the, in this, uh, the complex there, which was uh, really, really neat because it's, it's open to not just Christians, uh, you know, that are study the Bible, but it was to open to every, anybody that wants to come in the apartment community there. They, you know, don't have to be a Christian. It's a place where it's safe and they can share their personal trials and challenges to receive prayer and to support one another. And there are a few folks that are there that on disability, some of them with some addictions they're dealing with and other issues. And uh, this is just a, a means by which they can com you know, come together and help one another out. It was an incredible experience. The whole, the whole time there, as difficult as it was being away from my wife and kids for a month, I mean, I did learn a lot. There's a, a few highlights of some of the funny memories. There were a lot of things that happened during that month, but um, some of the highlights um, when our one of our top units was used by a, a police unit for a prostitution ring sting, um, and they po positioned themselves up there while they, you know, basically dealt with uh, some of the uh, prostitution that was in the area and so forth, and. Uh, uh, you know, it, it was great. We were excited to, to be able to offer our facility as a means to be able to help clean up the neighborhood and make things better. Also, I, you know, I had to makeshift this recording studio. I didn't have anywhere to record, but I still had the podcast to do. So I had this closet that I had to go into. And if you stay in there for too long, <laughs> you suffocate. But uh, it, was, it was great. It worked for the time being. But I only had certain times I could do it because when neighbors were home, you know, there were TVs blaring through the walls or other things that were throwing it off. Um, also, my pest battle. Um, I had my share of bed bug bites and uh, my friendly cockroach friends as well. And uh, that was a, a challenge, but it's something I didn't realize that was as bad as it was. Um, and then I also sort of a makeshift relationship counselor to uh, some of our tenants who weren't getting along. So there were, it may sound like a lot of negatives, but they really weren't. They were areas I had to focus on and probably wouldn't have if I didn't go there. 
because this is a community first and foremost this is a, a group of people that are living in close communion with one another and if they're not getting along and things are not working out well and we're not providing a good living experience then you know it, we really need to to focus on those things and uh, this is an area in transition it's in the path of progress it's changing it went from being a, a place that was not such a nice place before and I know you're probably listening to some of my horror stories and thinking it doesn't sound so great right now but it really is it's a really nice community and it's getting better but there are still inklings of some of the problems you know uh, you know like I mentioned the prostitution and so forth and um so, you know, we're trying, it, it, it's moving, it's changing. Uh, the landlords in the area are all consciously trying to improve their units and improve the community. And we're trying to move it from the low income housing to a, just a nice, you know, blue collar place to live. Um, the good positive things that came out of it is with our cops that we made contact with, they were, um, uh, had na are now buddies and they remain a presence in the community and in our our, even our, our, our apartment and our apartment area, they come in and, and, you know, are a presence that keep out folks that, you know, have something to hide from the police. Um, we also learned, I learned a lot about my property management firm. I intimately worked with them day in and day out. And so I understand a lot more about their style, their methods, their approach, so that now I can create systems that allow us to better work together. Uh, through, you know, various procedures and, and guidelines that work in conjunction with the way that they work with their other uh, patient, their other clients, <laughs> patients, I feel like a patient, sometimes, but with their other clients and uh, the, with the idea of building a long term relationship. I also found an excellent, outstanding local pest control firm that um, is approaching the, our pest problems. Like uh, I went after our tenant vacancies here, a kind of stealth pest control uh, company that's really going out uh, eradicating our unwelcome visitors to the apartment community. And now I believe too that I better understand the needs, aspirations, and hearts of my tenants, which I think will really help me to set up the systems and structures, put things in place that will make this apartment community a great place to live, a place that you look forward to coming to at the end of the day. Well, that's all for now. Um, that's my wrap up. I will continue to keep you updated, as I promised, the good, the bad, and the ugly on my trek to achieve 1,000 units by 2020. I always welcome your feedback and questions and recommendations. And I thank you for listening to our show. And uh, please note, old dog listeners, everything presented here today, including if the links, if we mention any, can be accessed in our show notes at the Old Dog website at olddogsreinetwork.com, that dog spelled D-A-W-G, uh, olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog, and that's where you'll find all our show notes. So everything I'm talking about will be recapped for you, so you don't have to worry about writing things down. It's already been done. And uh, look for episode 048 entitled Stealth Tenant Marketing Update Back in California. Well, that's it for today. So until next time, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Thanks again for listening and God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.